As Scouts of Australia, we acknowledge Australia's First Nations peoples, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, as the traditional custodians of this land. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. We're grateful to do our scouting in this country. We commit to use its resources wisely and develop our understanding of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. We also acknowledge any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Scouts who are part of our movement today. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, welcome back to uh, an another uh, live stream from the World Scout Jamboree for 2023 Contingent Management Team. Uh, I'm Lloyd, I'm the Deputy Contingent Leader and with us tonight we have um, the entire CMT and a few other additions as well. Um, so we're just going to go through and introduce everyone uh, and we will jump straight into it. We have a few slides for tonight, not as many as last time, uh, and we want you guys to uh, ask all the questions you have about WSJ 2023 uh, in the comments if you're on Facebook or also in the comments if you're on YouTube. Um, so please make sure you pop them down there and we'll jump straight into them very shortly. Uh, so just who's who in the zoo again quickly. Um, so Stephen, I see you're there. Give us a wave. Hello. Uh, Stephen is our contingent leader. Uh, as I said, I'm Lloyd. I'm the deputy contingent leader. Uh, we also have Phoebe. Hey, Phoebe. Uh, we have Toby as well. Hey, Toby. And this is everyone you would have seen last time, um, but there's a few additions this time around. Aaron, are you there? Hello. Uh, Aaron is the International Commissioner of Australia. Uh, we also have Nicola, who's our admin finance, communications and risk direct risk director. We have Shane, who is our Director of Logistics. Hey, Shane. Matt, who is our People, Culture, and Wellbeing Director. And we also have Brad, who is here as our contingent leader for our food house, uh, which is an exciting thing which we will talk about very shortly. So, Phoebe, I think you're covering this slide from memory. Um, yes, I am. Thanks, Lloyd. So, just quickly, I want to go over what we covered in the live stream last time which was quite a lot. So we went over what a World Scout Jamboree is. It's a the Jamboree itself, a 10-day camp held in a different country and every time it's held, every four years. Um, life and experience, you know, you'll wake up, you'll have breakfast and you'll meet people from France or Malaysia and all different countries. You'll go do activities. You'll eat delicious food. You'll do all these amazing things, tour activities. So that was talking about what we were brainstorming for our Korean post tours, which we will be going on, COVID-19, the, um, how do you say, contingencies we've set up to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic that we're currently coming out of, price and payment, which you can all find on our website, insurance, once again, probably find it on the website, contingent gear, which will include a backpack, travel bag, and a Kubra. Fundraising ideas, I'm sure you have heaps, and there's plenty if you just give it a quick Google, and registration details, which Rego's open at the moment. Cool. Thanks, Phoebe. Uh, so just quickly, a Rego update. So some of you may have seen the stats we've been posting on our Facebook page, which is pretty exciting. Um, but over the last few weeks, we've hit over the 500 mark. So we're currently sitting around 537 people for our contingent, um, which is amazing. And we are excited for that. Um, if you look at the breakdown by the states, we have, um, we have 223 from New South Wales, 132 from Victoria, 102 from Queensland, uh, 28 from an ACT, 23 from SA, WA 16, and we also have three from the Northern Territory and eight from Tasmania, and we can't forget them. So the question is, um, are we going to reach our target? And I think for that, uh, Toby, I think you're up next on uh, 
the reach our challenge target or Stephen. Actually, I'll usurp that one. It's Stephen here. It. Yep. Okay. Um, to reach our target, we've set a challenge, and that challenge is going to be that we're happy to give away an extra two swap badges for our contingent badge to every participant that comes from a group that brings five people from their own group. And if you bring 10, then we'll be looking at four extra badges and it goes up. So 15, you'll get uh, six, 20. Well, if you bring 20 from your group, talk to me and we'll see what else we can do for you because I am certain that if you can bring 20 from your group, I'll be absolutely ecstatic as the contingent leader. So now I just like to show the leaderboard, which is on our website. And there it is at the moment, a Big thank you to First Blackheath Scout Group in New South Wales. 11 participants registered right now. This is amazing, and I think they're heading for their 20 to get something special. And again, from New South Wales, Brookvale Curl Curl with eight, closely followed by Albany Creek from Queensland with six, and First Oak Park from Victoria with six. Then we've got a whole heap of people on five. I would love to see that list grow so big that we can't actually show it on one slide. So please go out, recruit your friends, get them in and have everyone join us on an absolute time of their life while we're away in Korea. So the challenge is there. I hope you all take it up. Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks, Stephen. Um, moving on, Phoebe, I think you're going to take this one as well. Yep, thanks Lloyd. So what will you be sleeping in? Um, when you get to Korea, when we get to the place, there will be a sleeping mat and a tent waiting for you. So currently the tents, they are two person tents, they can sleep two people. At the moment, they do only plan on having one person in each tent due to COVID, but this might change. And so yeah, you just got to bring a sleeping bag and a pillow, mat and tent are provided for you. Amazing. That's cool. I know that has been a question we've been getting quite a bit. What do the sleeping arrangements look like? So thank you for clarifying that. Um, and then how is the site looking? Uh, so with the site, um, this is sort of where the site was as at the 13th of September. Uh, you can see it's quite green at the moment. Uh, we're going in August just a little bit before this. So we hope it to be like this. And as it's a re reclaimed site, uh, the site is currently um, getting, uh, they're adding to it all the time. So uh, this is where, where the site is currently at, which is amazing. It's luscious green. Uh, so looking forward to that. And Nicola, I think this one's for you. I can see this question actually in the comments a lot. We're getting a question around this slide. So Hopefully we answer it here for everyone. Thanks, Lloyd. Yes, yeah, so our registrations have been open for about five weeks now and we're at over the 500 mark. If we keep that rate up, we'll have big, big problems for Shane. He'll be very happy to logistically worry about 2,000 members. But having said that, you have another three months, just under another three months, to get your registrations online. Hopefully you've received our postcard in the mail. If not, they are available on our website for you to print and give to your friends and encourage them to come along as well. Thank you, Lloyd. Thanks, Nicola. Cool. And Brad, um, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight as well. Uh, what is this food house? Uh, I think everyone would love to hear more about it. Great. Thanks, Lloyd. Uh, hi, everyone. Yes, as Lloyd said, I'm Brad, contingent leader for the first Australian food house. Uh, food House is our chance to show off the Aussie culture, traditions, and some of our fab fabulous foods. As part of the Australian contingent, you'll have the chance to visit the Food House, bring, you, bring your friends, um, and have a great Aussie meal away from home. Our leaders and rovers of the, from the contingent uh, will run the Food House as part of the international service team. So if you're a leader or rover and, uh, and you're interested, then just let Stephen or I know. Our next slide, please, Lloyd. Actually, before you go there, we can see some of the foods that we're already considering as part of the menu. And uh, we're definitely uh, interested in some more ideas uh, to really flesh out the fabulous offering that we have for Food House. Next slide, please, Lloyd. 
Uh, Food House has, has been around for several world jamborees now, and in 2019, there were more than 11 countries represented. Um, and as you can see from the list to the side, quite a few with some very interesting and wide ranges of foods and, um, and, and cultures. Uh, here you can see some pictures from uh, the Netherlands, Italy, Germany, and the United Kingdom. And you can see that they decorate up with some of the um, iconic emblems, um, traditional costumes, and, uh, and a good way to show off that, uh, that food, culture, and tradition. Uh, and that's all I have, Boyd, so thank you. Cool, thank you very much, Brad. Uh, Stephen, uh, one for you. Yep, thank you very much. Um, obviously, some people are going to find it a little bit hard to raise all the money, but we don't want you to miss out. New South Wales and Victoria have some fantastic funding that is available. So if you're from New South Wales and Victoria, there is the John and Mary Hill Fund for the New South Wales people and the EML Fund for Victorians. If you would like to apply for funding, please contact us and we can put you in touch with the right people in, in, in your uh, state or let us know or contact your branch headquarters directly. There are also, there's also some international scholarships, which we have been able to work with, in, with uh, Scouts Australia to provide, and that's for nine participants. And it will cover your Jamboree fee and all your airfares. So there's some fantastic ways of making certain that you can get to the Jamboree, even if you've been totally worried that you may not have been able to afford it, no matter what you did, you knew you wouldn't going to get there. So there is some funding there. So please apply for that funding. But before you apply for the funding, make certain that you have registered um, in, in the application system and pay the deposit. The reason we ask you for you to pay your deposit is for you to have some skin in the game so that you are putting your, putting forward to say, yes, I am interested and here is here is my funding to say I'm interested. So please register now. We will be publishing some more information on our website. So please, especially around how to apply for the international scholarships. So please keep checking our website regularly. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you to all our speakers tonight. Uh, so we are now up to the live Q&A section. As I said, we only had a few slides uh, tonight just to run everyone through. And I can already see we have quite a few comments uh, coming in. Um, so uh, we will stop sharing our screen so we can see everyone uh, in a bigger view. And we will start putting up the comments uh, for everyone to view. So there is a question from Ali Davies. Um, on Facebook, uh, when do we find out who gets their application approved? I'll take that one, Lloyd. Yep, no worries. Um, so, if you're a youth member, Ali, you are basically approved now. Um, we won't physically approve it until after all applications close and we've received the deposit and you have got, and you you've signed everything in the right spots. But basically every youth member that applies, you're already approved, so congratulations, we're going to see you in Korea. If you're an adult, it is nearly the same. The only caveat on that is we are restricted to, um, if we take uh, 500 youth members, we can only take 250 adults. So if we get more than that 250, then there may be a, a reduction in that number. But at the moment, we're nowhere near that. Our youth are far outweighing the number of adults that ca can go, which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to that youth number growing up further and further, which would mean then, Ali, if you're a leader, yes, you would be approved as well. So thank you for asking that question it's a great question and lloyd while i'm here can you just put up the question from robbie samora yes may as well thank you um robbie a great one for this one and one that i'm very passionate about as you possibly have gathered 
Um, how many people went to the last World Jamboree? I can tell you it was 684, um, of which was about 514 youth members and the rest were adults. What I want to do for this Jamboree is beat that target. So my target is 800 going to the Jamboree, which is at least 16 troops of youth and the rest as IST. Now, we're fa absolutely blessed by having the food house because that gives us another 30 people that will be coming along uh, as adults to support the food house or support Brad running the food house. So once again, anyone who's interested in uh, working in the food house, which is a fantastic place to meet people, uh, especially as we're showcasing the great Aussie food that's out there. Um, uh, when you apply, select Food House as your um, preference. Right. Thanks, Lloyd. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so, Nicola, there are two or three questions around when do registrations close. Um, so I think we covered that off in the slide. So that was the 31st of January, wasn't it? 2022. Correct. 31st cool. January 2022. That means you've got two and a bit months to get your applications in. Amazing. Uh, okay, I'm just going through the questions. So, Lloyd, I'd just like to jump in on that. Just, just to put a bit of context of why we close seemingly early, um, because a lot of us may be used to uh, an Australian jamboree where applications stay open and open and open and you can might even be able to get in three weeks beforehand. One of the main reasons is we have to tell Korea how many people we're taking um, and it is fairly rigid on, the, on that number that we tell them. And the other one is we've got to book airfares and we need to tell the airlines exactly how many people that we're taking so that they have enough seats on that aircraft so that we can take them. So that is why um, registrations do close a little bit earlier than what we'd expect for an Australian event. Thank you for that, Stephen. I think it's it's great to clarify. Um, there is a question from Jane on Facebook. Uh, are we in a troop with people from our scout group? I think that was one for you potentially, Stephen. Okay. Um, so... For this World Jamboree, we're trying something slightly different for, to what we've done at previous Jamborees in that we are looking at patrols being from your local area. I won't necessarily say from your own scout group, especially if you bring 20 people from your scout group. I'm not going to have all a, a, a patrol made up of one scout group. We will share the joy around with other members from your local area and then the patrols will be all mixed uh, up so we might have one patrol from south australia one patrol from queensland another one from the act and maybe one from victoria um, so you'll still get to meet lots of people but you'll have had at least 12 months because we want to let you know august next year what patrol you're in You'll have had 12 months to meet people locally, go on two or three camps together, um, meet the leader that will be you'll be working with at the Jamboree because, again, they will be also um, local. And by the time you arrive at the Jamboree, as a working patrol, you'll have nailed it. Then all it is is just to work as a troop, get to, get to know the other people in the troop, find out what these strange Queensland people are like or these ACT people that live in a bubble in the, in, in the capital, find out what we're all about and then go and enjoy yourself. So I hope that's answered your question, Jane. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Stephen. And look, while I've got you, I want to have a bit of a dialogue between uh, you and Nicola, if that's all right. Um, so... I've, I've sort of seen, I haven't seen any comments on it tonight yet, but I have seen some questions around and I think it's worthwhile um, jumping in and asking this. And since we're scouts, we love to be prepared. So I hope you're prepared for the impromptu questions. Um, but uh, there's this thing like the deposit and stuff that is on our registrations. Like when is it due? Like 
should be paid now before people are accepted? I've seen that question floating around a bit and I thought it'd be worthwhile raising it. Okay, well, I'd so, like to throw that to the well, finance director, being amazing. Nicola. Yeah, well, I was going to answer that. So we would like you to pay your deposit when you register, but you do need to pay it by the 31st of January. Having said that, your second payment is due by the 1st of February. So maybe you want to ask Father Christmas for some money towards your <laughs> initial deposit so you can pay that one and then by the 1st of February you will have saved up your next $500 for your second payment. That sounds like a great idea and I know um, the marketing and team has some stuff for lined up for 12 days of Christmas actually. Can I just also say when we're talking money, somebody's asked about currency. The currency in Korea is the Korean won. I Other did see that. might be able to save you some currency as well. Yes, if not this so Christmas. That could be next Christmas too and the next birthday or two. So you've got a few years to save your Korean won. Yeah, so Jane asked that question, what currency do they take there? Yeah, it's Korean won, isn't it? Yeah. Won. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Brad, it's it's not really, Brad's still here, yes. Uh, it's not really a question, but it's more of a, a, a congratulations or thank you. Um, but it's, I don't want to pronounce the name wrong, so if someone wants to take a stab at it, I think it's Jurgen, that's how I would say it, but yeah. I don't know. Yep. Yes, yeah, well done. I did see that in the comments there. So, yeah, we're looking, we are really looking forward to it and, uh, and we're hoping to have a, a, um, an offer that matches what um, those that have been doing Food House for some years uh, are putting forward as well. So, yeah, it's a really exciting time and uh, good to be part of the first uh, Food House. Yeah, and uh, thanks. Uh, and Jürgen, I'd like to say thank you for uh, joining our meeting all the way from Austria. Um, Unfortunately, I do know that Australia and Austria have been confused before, but definitely not uh, in this meeting because you, you have some fantastic mountains which I'd love to go skiing in one year. So <laughs> thank you very much, Jürgen. Back to you, Lloyd. Thanks. Um, so, uh, Matt, I think this is a like a, a spiky question for you potentially. Um, and if not, I think Stephen or Aaron may be able to have a go at it. But I think it's a bit welfare related. So what's the weather like in August when WSJ is on? Um, so the weather in Korea at this time of the year, um, from my understanding, is quite sunny, quite warm, but also quite muggy. Um, so shorts, T-shirts, um, plenty of sunscreen um, and plenty of days to have fun in the sun. Yes, okay, so very humid, uh, maybe like Cairns weather or a bit hotter, yeah? Okay, cool, thank you for that. Sorry, I'm just trying to flip between uh, screens. Um, Tim, you on Facebook, also, uh, sorry, on YouTube also said registrations are closing sooner than he expected, so he says make sure you get them in. Uh, there is a question from Robert Hain around, will leaders be in the same type of tents? Uh, what if I want to bring a stretcher and not just provided tents, will they be big enough? Stephen? Shane? Okay, I'll pick that one up. Um, yes, leaders will be sleeping in the same type of tents. Um, from memory, they're 2.2 metres long. Um, you can correct me, Lloyd, by having a quick look at the slide while we're talking about this. But yes, it should be big enough to take a stretcher. That has been one of the things that we have asked um, the Koreans, not necessarily on a stretcher basis, but we wanted tents that were big enough for some of our larger venturers and leaders who might be breaching, coming close to the 1.8, 1.9 metre mark. So we have been guaranteed that that will be fine. Um, and therefore, yes, a stretcher is usually around about the 1.8 metre mark, so you should be able to be fine with that. And yes, the tent was uh, 215 centimetres long, so 2.15 uh, long. Great. So, yes. I split the difference perfectly. Amazing. Um, there was a question from Anna on the YouTube around, can we pop the registration link in? So we've done that so they can click on it after this and go directly to it. Uh, she says, thank you. Uh, we have another question from Jane uh, around uh, if you're a scout now and a venture at the time, does this mean my scout is approved? He's nearly 15, um, but he'll be 16.4 at the time. 
I'll take that one. Okay. Um, we take anyone who is over 14, and this actually answers one of the other questions I've seen. So on the first day of the Jamboree, you must be 14. And you must be less than 18 on the last day of the Jamboree. That is to be a youth member to attend the, the Jamboree. Um, there is no wriggle room on this at all. And I'm really sorry for anyone who's on this call who turns 14 on the second day of the Jamboree. The only thing I can offer you is a fantastic event in Poland in another four years time. But um, the dates are solid and very strict and we cannot have any changes on that. So but to answer your question specifically, Jane, um, yes, he will be 16.5. He will be a venturer and he will have a time of his life cool thank you and very actually much. while i've got the floor um yes. unless about four people have registered in the last 20 minutes james first blackheath is still leading the registration table yes that is correct first blackheath is still leading yep. uh, unless i mean maybe if we've had lots of people apply because of our challenge, they may not be, yeah, so. We, we might need to punch the numbers again. <laughs> yes. um, all right, cool. There is a question uh, from Megan around how old do you have to be to go? Uh, so we don't get this wrong. And Stephen, I'm going to pull it up on the website, maybe while you or Nicola talk to it, just so we uh, quote the right number, because I don't want to do uh a kiss what kiss did the other week and they said one thing and then they were like oh no we got it we got it wrong or we got it right and they were trying to well, question themselves so I, who wants I to take say it? because Stephen said it so now it's my turn so yeah. you have to have turned 14 by the first day of the jamboree you cannot have turned 18 by the last day of the jamboree and if you go to our website you will find those age limits written there and also the dates of birth that you need to be born between two attend as a youth member if you'll be over 18 you can attend as ist or as a line leader yes thank you Please check the website and has lots of information it does the website is a gold mine of information i will say uh, if anyone's looking for it it's scouts.com.au forward slash wsj2023 thank you nicola on that one i'll just jump in quickly as well um when we talk about the Jamboree, we are actually only talking about um, when we're on the Jamboree site itself. Post tour, if you turn 18 on the last day of the Jamboree and you think, well, I've still got 10 days of post tour, that's fine. You can be over 18 for the post tour. You'll just be treated as a junior leader on the post tour. So no problems with that. And if you're lucky enough to turn eight, uh, 14 the day before the Jamboree and therefore you're under 14 during our pre-Jamboree camp, that's fine too. You should really thank your parents that you were born on that day because you actually make the Jamboree. So well done. Thanks, Stephen and Nicola. Um, okay, we have a question from Jesse. How many people are in each patrol? Who would like to take that, Shane? Oh, I can jump in on that one. Or, or Nicola, I think it's either admin or logistics. Well, I think they all. We, I think we all know the answer. There are nine, youth, nine youth and one leader per patrol, and there's four patrols in a troop. So a troop is thirty-six youth and four adults, but Amazing. also maxed out at forty people. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, we have another one uh, from Anna. My daughter says she wants to go to WSJ. What happens if she changes her mind or circumstances change? What is the latest I can cancel and still receive a refund? Nicola? Yes. So if you want a full refund, we need to know before the end of January 2022. After that, there will be a cancellation fee. And again, the withdrawal policy is all on our website. So for example, if you withdraw between the 1st of February and 31st of July next year, you will get a full refund or 
a refund of what you've paid, less $500. And then it ramps up from there. So have a careful look at that. But I've been to several World Jamborees and my question is, why would you choose not to go after you've wanted, been wanting to go and you've put in the effort to go and you've started your fundraising and getting excited? Just do it. Thanks, Nicola. That's a great answer. Uh, Stephen, a spicy uh, question or a, a quite a good question, uh, either for yourself or Aaron, I think, or even Matt, potentially. What are the, reg uh, from Christina, what are the regulations regarding youth member COVID vaccinations? Um, I'll start that and Aaron, as the International Commissioner, might wish to jump in a bit later on. Um, but as Scouts Australia have just uh, issued our vaccination policy, which can be found on Scouts National website. And basically, we do not mandate any um, regulations around vaccinations or anything like that. What we do do is we will follow the local government regulations, state, federal as well. And that is what we will be doing when we go overseas. Obviously, we're going to another country, so we will have to follow the regulations in Korea. At the moment, we have not been told what the regulations in Korea are. Um, obviously, they're very much under a state of flux. But what, this was one of the questions that was asked at the head of contingents meeting that I was lucky enough to attend a month ago. Um, unfortunately, that was remotely. I couldn't fly to Korea and enjoy um, finding out all about the Korea culture. But it was a question that was asked and they have said that they don't believe they will be able to mandate that youth must be vaccinated because there are a lot of countries who will not be um, able to vaccinate all the youth even in 2023. But overall, we will be um, following the, the government requirements in Australia and the government requirements in Korea. Uh, Aaron, do you have anything else to add? Thank you, Stephen. The other consideration is also the airlines. And we are aware that there is a strong expectation the airlines will mandate a vaccination out of Australia. Uh, but as Stephen said, between now and 2023, a lot can change. Uh, so once we have the final answer, the contingent will obviously pass that on to every contingent member. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Lloyd. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, Aaron. Um, okay. Um, there is a question from Susie on uh, a carer. So if I sign up as a carer for a scout with a disability rather than a leader, do I just fill in the adult application? Nicola, Stephen? I can take that one. Hi, Susie. Yes, um, all you have to do is complete the adult application. Um, I'm just thinking we may not have selected allowed to have a drop down for a carer to apply if not it will be there by tomorrow morning i will talk to the people who run the site and um have carer added if we haven't added it at the moment and i may we may have missed that so i apologize susie if we have but yes just a, uh, apply as a leader you will select carer in the drop down and then complete everything else that's there um, if you do have any other questions, Susie, um, drop me an a email at hello at wsj2023.scouts.com.au and we'll be able to get back to you. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. It sounds very much like a my people will talk to your people scenario. So hopefully uh, your the uh, national office help us make that change tomorrow or overnight. So that would be amazing. Um, okay, we have a question uh, on cooking. Uh, do scouts cook in their troops similar to an Australian jamboree? Phoebe, Toby, I think one of you could take this as you've both been to a World Scout jamboree as youth members. Who's drawing the straw? Phoebe, if you want to answer first. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say you haven't spoken yet, so... <laughs> Right. Um, but no, yeah, so 
yeah, that's what we did at the last jamboree. We got our ingredients together and cooked lunch and dinner. Not lunch, breakfast and dinner mostly. Breakfast was kind of iffy. I guess that's really, you know, some people wanted to cook breakfast, some people different. But yeah, you'll cook dinner. Yes, <laughs> in short. Um, I was just going to add that you know your troop kind of does it the way they want to do it. So the patrol can. Um, you know, the, the actual troop patrol leaders or the troop leadership kind of team can decide whether they do it as a patrol per day, they can do a patrol per meal, they kind of make up how they want to do it at the time. Yeah, and what we did, so we had dinner was rotating through patrols, but breakfast, if your patrol wanted to cook breakfast, you got up and cooked breakfast. And that's how it was. But yeah, so that's just something you'll organise in your troops when you get them. Interesting. So, yeah, so there is a cooked so. breakfast option. Mm. Sounds fun potentially. We'll see what Korea offer. What, what um, about lunch? I didn't didn't hear about lunch then. What what happens with lunch? Food house. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did not eat lunch in my campsite once. I think. <laughs> on the road, like you took a packed lunch or anything. Um, I think some days I packed lunch, but most okay. This probably is not good um, health, so Matt, you can kind of slap me on the hand if this, but I don't think I actually ate lunch most days because I was just distracted. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I hope you but, eat lunch so, yeah. this time. <laughs> I'll try okay. to remember, I promise. Uh, this is one of the questions that I did uh, get, that was asked at uh, the head of contingency meeting as well, and the three meals will be provided, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, the lunches will be more of a packed lunch so that if, if a patrol is going out on an activity, they can take a lunch with them uh, and eat it whenever. Or if you're a Phoebe, you just don't bother eating it like a naughty school kid. It'll be still sitting in their, pack, in their bag when you unpack it when you come home. But yes, all three meals will be provided um, and it is usually up to the patrol the duty patrol to cook it at night and as phoebe said if you want cooked meal in the morning in in the morning for breakfast you tend to do it yourself but yes i hope that's answered the question cool uh there is a question from james on any news on the post jamboree tour shane i think you're up uh, so pretty much, yeah, we've got expressions of interest out to show your hand if you're interested in that in your application process at the moment. Uh, so when they close in January, uh, we'll look at that and then post more feedback and updates in the early new year about where we plan to go with the post tours. Cool. Thank you very much, uh, Shane. And I think we did put an article on Facebook or on our website just before the last live stream on some options we're considering. Um, but yeah, that could potentially slightly alter. Um, there was another question while I've got you though, Shane, around the cost of the post tour, I think. Any rough costs? I think there was. Yeah, what is the cost of the post tour? Do we have any rough guides at the moment? Uh, like if I was to put my hat on it, somewhere between probably the early 2000s and probably $2,500. That would okay, be my cool. guess. Stephen, would you like I to will, check? Yep, I, I will help uh, Shane out there. Because of um, COVID lockdowns, when we prepared a budget, we couldn't prepare a budget for the post tours. So what we've done is uh, put together a lot of information of what we would like to do on the post tour. And now once the uh, applications come in, we will see who wants to go where. Do we have enough to do a post tour in Japan? Or is everyone interested in going off to um, Thailand? Or do we do both? And then we will actually build out and price properly the tour. But um, Based on what Shane has said, I would say that's a very good ballpark mm -hmm. because we're looking at roughly the same sort of thing as we did in um, America last time, well, Canada for the post tour. And it was around about the 2-4 mark from memory. And we believe we can get exactly the same sort of thing 
same sort of price uh, 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 so yep in between two and two four i would say cool well done shane good ball parking and i, I would agree uh, with those prices thanks stephen for clarifying uh while i got you though i'm going to put you back on the spotlight uh luggage limits is a sort of a weird question at the moment but i think it's relevant um so what luggage limits must we adhere to any difference for leaders versus youth members or is it too early to say well it the luggage limits are provided by um the airline on which we fly uh, they don't <laughs> like just taking lots and lots of luggage well they don't mind it but you've got to pay lots and lots of money to take lots and lots of luggage so the limit i believe at the moment is 22 kilograms um per person and that is leaders and youth it doesn't matter you it's still 22 kilos um we as part of the contingent kit we are providing a uh travel bag which is if you've ever gone to an australian jamboree or know when someone has gone to an australian jamboree you'll know what they look like they're basically a duffel bag and you stuff as much as you can in there up until 22 kilos anything over 22 kilos the airlines might be nice but then again they might not be so um yeah 22 kilos tim is the maximum that you can take cool thanks Stephen. um matt a question for you um from susie what types of well-being support looking after scouts to manage their energy manage relationships etc will be put into place Hi Susie, so a lot of these things will be managed um, through the patrol and through the youth troop. Um, there'll be adult support there and they'll be able to oversee things like food consumption, um, you know, basic well-being, um, relationships, etc. Um, if it comes to escalating that, we have a team of myself and uh, about six other people who have um, health, welfare, medical training who will be able to intervene um, as required and we can put plans in place to help assist. However, if, if there is any information that uh, could help us to develop a, a plan prior to the event, I strongly encourage you to put that through the registration system just so we can make contact with you prior to arriving in Korea and, um, and, and put some plans into place to best support the youth to have the best experience that they can. Very thorough answer, thank you. Um, we covered the what is the cost of the post tour. We have another question from Mr Zamora. Are leaders and IST counted the same uh, for the number of total leaders allowed to attend based on the youth number attending? I'll pick that one up. And the answer is a very simple yes. All right. Amazing. Um, Nicola. Oh, sorry. A... I'll, I'll also add to that. It's IST, CMT, food house, and um, line leaders. So if you're over 18, it counts to the number. Cool, thank you. Uh, Nicola, a question for you. What date does the camp start? I hope the camp name specifically referring to WSJ 2023 from Megan. Okay, but Megan, just to be thorough, the Jamboree itself runs from the 1st to the 12th of August. However, us Aussies, we will be leaving our country on the 28th or 29th of July and spending a few days in Seoul before the jamboree itself and then if you're coming straight home you'll be home on um the 13th of august you know and or arriving home depending on the flight times and then if you're on the post tour you'll be home around the 19th of august um check out our website all the dates are there as well so right. hopefully i've answered your question thank you uh there is a question will family be able to join the post tour You're giving me all the hard ones, are you, Lloyd? Uh, I am not saying anything, but yes, please, I'd like you to answer this question. We would love Otherwise... to have fam family join, but they must attend the Jamboree in the first place. So to be quite honest, the answer you've actually asked, James, is no, they can't. Um, if they attend the Jamboree, yes, they can. Um, but it, the post tour is only for scouts, venturers, uh, leaders who have attended the Jamboree itself. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, Matt, 
there is another welfare related question. Uh, what happens if you get unwell and require hospitalization while on camp? And if you can't take it all, I'm happy to jump in or Stephen can jump in as well. Sure, so Susie, there's a couple of things that can occur. Um, throughout our contingent team, we've got a couple of nurses, paramedics and doctors who will be able to assist, um, I guess, in the acute phase of an injury or illness. Um, during the Jamboree, there's also an on-site hospital that's got a couple of doctors, well, I'm sure many doctors actually, um, that will be able to provide um, acute preliminary care there. If it does require escalation um, to a more permanent hospital, that will be all arranged and facilitated um, through our travel insurance. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. Um, there is a question, and I, I need to sort of reinterpret this, I think, but will your child stay together with their own local unit in a patrol if they don't make their numbers? So I assume uh, Michelle is asking here, um, will they stay together if there's not enough people um, to make up a patrol from their local area? I'll pick that one up. Yes. Um, whilst we are aiming to put youth from their local area together, by local area, if I take um, Outback uh, WA, the local area might span over a thousand kilometres because that's just the way scouting is in, in local remote areas. In country, in cities, it might be your district or your region. When we say local, we're trying to get people so that they don't have to travel tens of, uh, quite a few thousand kilometres for a pre-Jamboree camp. So yes, they will be, if if we can keep them, at least three of them in together, we will keep three together and then spread the, the other members of the team. But obviously if there's only four from one troop, we may put two and two together in two different patrols. What we'll never do is put one youth member by themselves if there's a friend that they have. We'll try and put their friends together and do what we can. And this is where working with um, the uh, information we get from the application system and then talking to local leaders to try and work out what the best mix of our local patrols are going to be. So if your child has a um, preference to, to stay with another friend, let us know. Send us an email and we'll see what we can do. And I'll just about guarantee you they'll stay with that friend. Thanks, Thanks Stephen. Lloyd. Um, there's another question similar to before, but it's slightly different. So I think we should take it. Uh, how many IST positions are available with the contingent? From Mark? Good question. My maths isn't, my maths isn't that quick at the moment. Um, but Mine basically... We take 22 off half the, so let, let's say we take 600 youth members. That means we can take 300 um, adults. We take 22 off that and then take another 72 off. So we'll call that around 100, even though it's not. Um, that means we can take 200 IST. Um, but basically, I don't believe we're going to hit the number of IST positions that we can take. So for all adults, keep applying. Um, it's going to be great to take you in, as an IST member um, to Korea. Cool, thank you. Um, there is a question from Tim on Facebook. Can you describe the meal arrangements a bit more detail? Cooking equipment supplied by WSJ, what's the purpose of food houses with regards to meals? I'm going to take the first part of the question and then I think, Aaron, did you put your hand up to take the second part or do you want Brad to take it? You'll I'll take talk it. about it. Okay. Uh, so the first part, yes. So the cooking equipment is supplied by the um, host association as well. So each troop will get the basic supplies they need to cook their, um, their meals that are provided. At this stage, um, Korea has stated they'll be giving some meal boxes um, or meal kits, um, which will sort of be – um, ordered uh, for each troop, and this is where uh, they will cook them in their local troop. Um, so this is sort of the arrangements at the moment they're aware of, but cooking happens in the local troop and the equipment is supplied by the Jamboree. Aaron? 
Thank you, Lloyd. One of the best highlights of international scouting is the ability to try all the local foods and the local uh, cooking methods that are supplied. So every patrol will have access to cooking equipment. Uh, there will be a choice in meals that are available for the patrol to cook during the event and prepare for lunches, prepare for breakfasts. All of the meals will be available uh, and plenty of choice for the participants to try and experiment with local cultural foods. Um, most of those won't be announced until much, much closer to the event. Uh, and so the contingent will be able to share a lot of that information in the months leading up to the event. Um, the food houses, and I'll let Brad expand on this, but the food houses are additional to the food that people are supplied. So all meals for the entire Jamboree and the entire time away from Australia are supplied. No one requires any extra money for any extra meals. They're all supplied. However, you might want extra snacks, you might want extra meals, and that's where the food houses provide a great cultural experience. I'll hand over to Brad. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Aaron. And um, you, you're right in saying that food house is there as, as an extra. It's really for us to showcase Australia's food culture tradition to the rest of the world. Um, but it is still a great place to come and visit. It's a great place to grab a meal or a snack, something that, um, that you uh, might, might not have brought from home. Um, but generally, we're thinking at this stage that all of the food houses, there will be a small cost involved um, as, as people experience and try those foods from other places. So um, that's our aim. It's to not only have that support for you um, to try something uh, from home if, if you're getting sick of what the meal is that's down there, um, but also to, to really showcase Australia to the rest of the 35,000 plus scouts uh, and, and leaders at the Jamboree. Thanks. Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks, thanks, thanks Stephen. Uh, thanks, Aaron, and thanks, Brad. Stephen, did you want to add anything to that one at all? Or? Uh, not particularly. I think they've both covered it fantastically, except that there's one thing that you don't do at a World Jamboree, and that is to go hungry. So there's so many options for food, whether it's in your troop lines, uh, eating out at umpteen dozen different food houses just to savour the different foods. Wherever it is, there's lots of food. So don't you don't need to worry about that. And Korea is providing enough equipment for the troops to cook it all. Yes, definitely. Um, we have a question on digital devices from Jacinta. I'm happy to take it. Uh, digital devices, uh, yes, they will be allowed. Korea has uh, said that they will have a digital jamboree, so a lot of their program will be on the digital jamboree aspect. Uh, and uh, so the answer is yes, they'll be allowed. And charging, uh, that's a great question. Um, the Jamboree is trying to be as sustainable as possible. Um, they will There will be some charges available for purchase from the Jamboree and a swap and go aspect is what they've sort of told us at the moment. Um, you can bring your own charger, but we can't guarantee at this stage they'll be charging facilities for that. Um, so there will be some sort of swap and go aspect where you can purchase a battery at the Jamboree and um, put it in for charging and they'll give you another one. I'm not sure, Stephen, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I'll just add very quickly. So this is something new that uh, Korea is uh, doing. Yeah. Uh, previously, it's been a bit of a mess of how to charge. I think it's a fantastic idea that you'll be able to go and purchase a small uh, power pack. It won't be overly expensive from what we've been told. And then whenever you need a new one, you just drop it in, get a new one, and move on so it's a bit like your gas bottles in australia swap and go you drop one empty one you get a full one immediately back and away you go um we do have some questions still and i think there was one around um charging for um hearing imp hearing impaired people for charging their hearing aids etc um if they require 240 volt, and this is also the same for people who require, for leaders who require CPAP machines, uh, they will need to be, there's no 240 volt being provided to any campsite. So as a contingent team, we can certainly help out um, your daughter, Josephine, and look at charging there. But I'd like to throw that question um, directly to Nicola when I've finished. Um, Nicola works with um, 
people with a hearing impairment. So she hopefully will be able to give us a little bit more information on this one. Um, leaders with CPAP machines, they will need to be uh, battery operated. Uh, and then again, Korea is looking at similar to what World Scout Jamboree in America did, having a swap and go for uh, 12 volt batteries that are charging overnight or charging during the day for the CPAP machines at night. That is still very much up in the air, but the thing that we can say is there will be no 240 volt charging available on a troop site. Nicola, can you answer anything more for Josephine regarding um, yep. hearing impaired, hearing impaired yep. charging? Uh, Josephine, just generally speaking, and I'm happy for you to email me at the um, hello at WSJ2023 uh, email address if you want to talk more. But um, assuming your daughter is a youth member, she should be able to bring disposable batteries supplied by Hearing Australia. Um, but again, as you will know, that will depend on the type of processor that she has. Um, perhaps that's something to have a look into, but I can certainly and I'm very happy to support her with the charging of her implants overnight if that's what is needed. But, yeah, if you'd like to contact me separately, I'm happy to talk further. Thank you, Nicola and Stephen. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, there is a question which I'm not game enough to pop up on the screen, but, Matt, uh, I think you might be able to refer to it um, if that's possible. Sure. So there was a question um, in relation to relationships um, that was asked. And to be very simple, um, there's to be no intimacy on on these sorts of camps. Scouts Australia has a very strict policy on that. It quite often um, relates to something that we refer to as dad's rules. So there's to be no drugs, alcohol, discrimination or sex on these camps at all. Full stop, no discussions. Thank you, Matt. That's a great answer. Um, there is a question from our friend Noel Devar, uh, following on from Michelle's question, uh, will patrols and troops be made up from scouts from all around Australia? So as Stephen sort of mentioned, Noel, patrols will try and be made up from local, but then the um, patrols within the troop will be integrated. So you may have a patrol from New South Wales, Perth, et cetera. That's sort of the thinking we're going for on this one. Anything else to add on that one, Stephen? Uh, no, I think you've no. handled it perfectly. And All I'm right. hoping that Noel will be uh, one of our troop leaders again. Look forward to yes. working with you, Noel. Um, there is a question also following on from Tim on the post tour. Can attendees travel home independently after the tour? For example, if the family wants to meet in the country and stay longer. May, may I suggest that the contingent uh, will need to look at the tour options. Um, and certainly on behalf of Scouts Australia, the contingent will prepare those final budgets like Stephen mentioned, uh, and then the National Association will actually approve those. Um, and so that will need to be a consideration in their later planning. Yes, thank you very much, Aaron. Um, there is a question uh, from, from Jane around, will there be special times of day to be able to go to other countries' contingents and trade badges? Well, I think Toby, Phoebe, this one is for you. Um, uh, that that's all day. All day yeah. is it? All day, every that day. Whenever you meet day. someone, there's always opportunity to trade badges and go out and meet other people. So definitely something that you just kind of do throughout the entire Jamboree experience. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yes. I remember even like sometimes after dinner, I saw a whole bunch of side trading on the sides of walkways and roads, which was pretty cool. Mm. Uh, so looking yeah, forward people, to seeing that again. Yeah, they set up blankets. People brought out their stretches as tables to set up. So there's always people around to trade with. Yes, <laughs> it's very popular. Um, okay. There is a question from Pebbles around, uh, will there be any notable... Um, Korean positions such as BTS at opening or closing ceremony. Look, I would love BTS to perform at opening or closing ceremony level, um, but we're not sure yet. Uh, Korea hasn't released this information. Uh, once we have some more information, we'll let you know. But at these type of events, they usually try and keep it a secret until the actual opening ceremony or the day before. And I remember last time, um, we actually didn't even know till the evening of when they walked on stage. Uh, so we had some guesses, but it was actually no one really knew what the uh, answer was. So unfortunately not. Um, 
There's another question on mobile phones. It's a bit different though to can they bring devices? It's are they required to have a phone at Jamboree? It's not necessarily a requirement. Um, Korea is looking at what options are there are for people who don't have phones. Um, so it's something we'll be able to have more information about. It's similar to WSJ19, I think, you know, phones were um, used for activities, but people who didn't have phones didn't miss out. Um, so I think that's probably the best answer. I'm not sure, Stephen or Aaron, if you wanted to add any more to that one. No? Cool. All right. So I think we are to the end of our questions. I don't see any more questions on there. And that puts us just over an hour as well. So I'm happy to stay on for a little bit longer and keep going if we get some more questions in. Um, I would like to answer James's question, which I think we may have skipped over. Where is um, that one? Uh, 845, James Robinson. Oh, um, so James, um, when will the first pre-Jamboree oh, event be held and what will it be? So what we're aiming because of our local patrols is we will let our let everyone know which patrol they're in and the leader. So assuming that you're a line leader, James, um, we will let you know who's in your patrol and then we'll be asking you to arrange an activity, um, be it uh, ju just a night to get together at someone's place, bringing the parents along so the parents can all meet, whatever. It's up to you to form that patrol. Um, and then going on a patrol camp sometime in the time, we'll be asking things that you need to come up with information and ideas during during these events like we might be saying to you what for here here is some menus that Korea is suggesting that they will be providing to you how about cooking some of these and seeing what you like what you don't like and giving us some feedback so there'll be a lot of things like that that we'll be giving ideas to be for you but we are not organizing in any way shape or form as a contingent team a pre-jamboree camp as much as I'd love to, the problem with that is the fee would go up and I cannot justify putting up the fee even further just so that we can all greet, meet together as a contingent before we leave Australia. So the first time the contingent will meet as a contingent is uh, wherever we are going to be staying in Seoul and that will be a fantastic time. I can remember the first time the whole contingent got together in America and all it was was a sea of yellow and green t-shirts all six all 600 of them it was absolutely fantastic so I'm looking forward to the same thing in Korea except not 600 it'll be 800 thanks Lloyd thanks Stephen uh, there's another question from James uh, around will there be Wi-Fi at the campsite uh, the answer we've been given is yes uh, apparently they're building a 100 core fiber connection into the side at the moment is what they told us. So that will be interesting. Um, I know it will be better than some connections here potentially that we have uh, every now and then uh, at people's places. Um, and there is another question from Michelle, will this Q&A be available as a link for people who are without Facebook? Yes, um, Michelle will publish this on our website under the resources page within the next 48 hours or so. Uh, similar to what we did last time, and it'll be a link to our YouTube, uh, the Scouts Australia YouTube, where people can view a copy of this live stream. And so, I just, I, sorry, I was just going to say, if anyone comes up with questions after this, please just email us at hello at wsj2023.scouts.com.au. Um, We've got a team of people waiting for your questions and I'd love to answer them. Uh, so, yep, that's the best way to get in touch with any of us for any of your questions. Um, if the people who are on the end of that hello email can't, don't have the skill set to answer it, I specifically welfare questions, etc., they will be referred to Matt and uh, Matt will then liaise directly. But we would love to hear from you and any question is an important question. If you don't know the answer, you need to ask the question and we need to provide you that answer. 
So I will take it on board as one of my things to make certain that we do is to answer all of your questions. So please just send them through to hello at wsj2023.scouts.com.au. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so thank you everyone for watching tonight. I uh, really appreciate you spending the time with us. I've seen this number tick up over like 55 and then it keeps fluctuating and goes up and goes down. So thank you to everyone who's tuning in wherever you are uh, around the world or uh, in Australia. Um, with, as I said, this link will be available on YouTube shortly uh, and also again on our Facebook page to watch. Um, so please make sure you refer to our website as well for more information. Uh, and thank you, team and panelists, for joining us tonight as well and uh, answering all our questions. Um, so I hope everyone enjoys. I'm just seeing more questions come in, though, as we're trying to wrap up. And I think I might just um, yep. just answer two of them quickly um, before we jump off. Um, what are the current rego numbers, James? Um, we covered that early, the earlier start of the presentation. I think the total number from the room is 537. Um, but you can watch this back shortly and see the numbers per state. We had a slide on that, and we're looking to do some monthly updates on our Facebook page as well. And there's a question from James, a different James. Um, but if you'd like to change, if you'd like to change answers to the questions in the registration, how do you go about this? I think um, he's referring to his application potentially. Yeah, I'll pick that one up. Yeah. Um, the application system we will not lock. Uh, we may lock certain questions, but specifically around medical, we want if something changes the day before you fly, we want you to update the system then and there. Um, I can see Matt's nodding there. It is so important that we have your most up to date data. So please go in, um, update where all your data whenever you need to as things change. Emergency contacts if they change. You're, if you decide to, you don't really like Canberra and you want to go down to Melbourne, so, or mum and dad did anyway, and you've changed your address, put that in. We just need to know every change. So do it as you go. And to answer Jesse's question, we have no idea. Um, that's up to Korea about, and the question was, will there be bracelets um, from the last jamboree? We really don't know. That's up to Korea and how Korea build their Jamboree program. All I can say is I'm excessively excited about what I saw at the head of contingents meeting about what they're looking at doing. So even if they deliver 15% of what they say they're going to deliver, it's going to be mind blowing. So just, just watch this space, I suppose, and wait and see when you arrive at the Jamboree. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, we'll see you again shortly. And um, as Stephen said, any questions, please send them through uh, via email to hello at wsj2023.scouts.com.au. Uh, good night, everyone. See you all. Good night.